All right, so my iPad, and we're going to go ahead and launch ASI Air. Uh, once you get connected, it'll look like this the very first time. It's going to show the app version and the firmware version. Um, basically, this gets updated every single time. Um, the, um, there's a new update like for iOS or for Android, and then once it gets updated, it'll automatically update them out from the from the actual <clears throat> from your tablet. So it's pretty cool. So in here, it's got the date and time, your latitude, your longitude, um, your mount. Um, there's tons of mounts in here to choose from. I mean, the list is huge. So I won't won't bore you with all that, but essentially you can see there's quite a bit of mounts it uh, supports. So because I'm using an EQ mod um, uh, cable, there's basically the USB cable, the RJ45. Uh, you just set it to EQ mod. You don't have a specific like, uh, I wouldn't choose like the, I don't even think it's in there, but the Sky Watcher. As a matter of fact, I, I am almost positive it's not in there. So if I go down and look for the Sky Watcher, I don't think there's any Sky Watcher products at all. Oh, there's a couple. <clears throat> so there's a couple Sky Watcher products that you can choose, but um, basically because it's an EQ mod uh, cable, um, you just leave it on that and it connects to the mount. So then I got the focal length of my um, of the Red Cat, and then the focal length of the the guide scope now the guide scope is a 30 millimeter diameter scope but it's 120 millimeter focal length um and then my camera and then my guide scope and then my electronic auto focuser automatically picks these up based on the power hooked up into the device and then if i had another device um, i don't have an electronic filter wheel so it's not showing it so that would be the next power adapter that i would hook up to it so once you hit enter and you jump into the app it takes a second here this is what it looks like hit the okay button we'll go through all these there's quite a bit of stuff to look at but we're just going to focus on the top bar right now um so if you go to the wi-fi um basically this is the wi-fi settings that you can configure um basically i've got it dumbed down to 2.4 gigahertz because i'm doing a wi-fi station mode so basically what i'm doing is i'm having the asi air connect to my home router and then i'm basically using my ipad to connect to that same wi-fi and get connected to the ASI Air. If you're like at a dark site, you'd want to leave it probably on five gigahertz if your if your cell phone or your tablet supports that. And then basically you would use the ASI Air hotspot that it automatically creates. It'll create some dumb hotspot and the password's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, once you connect to that, then basically you can control it with the ASI Air application like we're doing in here. Um, there's not a whole much uh, in here uh, on the on the power outputs you can toggle these on and off so i only have the three power outputs turned on and basically i have my telescope my focuser and my cameras um, uh, other than that that's pretty much the breakdown of it um so that's kind of that uh, next is the camera and here i have my camera you turn it on um and then uh, basically i set my um my guide scope um, or not my god scope, Jesus, <laughs> the red cat, uh, 250 millimeters for the focal length for the red cat. And then, um, if I was using uh, a shutter release cable, I could turn that on, but I'm not, I'm using a USB cable. Um, and then I have the ISO set to 200. And then, uh, the other thing that I do in here is I customize the file name. I just add the ISO and the date. So every single file that it creates it puts the ISO that I use and the date and then it'll show the rest of the information like the light if it's a dark if it's a bias uh, and then what I'm shooting uh, in this case this is showing MA81 and then how many seconds so uh, advanced settings I don't mess with that this is just defaults from the app uh, short of that that's pretty much the camera settings up next is the guide settings so um, I usually set the gain to roughly 90 um, there. Okay. If I move my mouse on it, 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 it scrolls. So it makes it a little difficult with the mouse. But anyways, I have my uh, camera set. Um, and then I have the, the focal length of the, uh, the scope, which is again, 120 millimeters. And then I just leave these set to 2000. Uh, there's other users on YouTube that recommend other things. I just leave it alone. Um, I leave the auto restore calibration because it turns that on. And then the big thing in here for the guide scope settings are dither settings. So in here is when your mount's going to dither. So you have to turn it on. And then you basically specify 
uh, how much you want it to dither based on pixel stability and then how long it takes to settle. So I'm letting it settle for five seconds before it starts shooting again. And then I set the interval to every fourth shot. So every fourth shot that I take, it'll automatically dither. So that's the break on that. Um, one. Next up is our telescope settings. And this is actually really for the mount. Um, in here, um, you'll have your meridian settings that you can turn on. And basically what this means is that five minutes before uh, the meridian flip happens, it'll stop taking pictures. And it may, based on what your shoot time is uh, and how long the exposure is, it may happen beforehand. So I've had it stop as much as eight minutes before it does a meridian flip before it flips. So um, I just leave those set to default. Uh, and then in here, you can set your guiding rate based on what you're guiding, you know, celestial, uh, deep space or whatever. Uh, next up is the filter wheel, uh, which we don't have, so I'll, I'll skip that. And I'm going to go to the electronic focuser that's turned on. Um, it has an autofocus mode, and every, what this means is that every two seconds it'll it'll take a, an exposure, and then it'll try to focus on that exposure with the two-second exposure. Um, what's going on is that every time that it changes two degrees, it'll automatically refocus, and every 30 minutes it'll refocus. And then it'll, it'll do an auto. Once it does a meridian flip, it'll automatically refocus after the meridian flip. So uh, that's basically the focus settings. Um, I haven't messed with everything else. It's just default and stuff like that. And finally is our SD card. Uh, and it just shows how much we've been using uh, and the storage on the card. After you've taken pictures and you've removed them from the card, you can just hit the clear button and it'll remove the uh, images, uh, image files from the card, kind of like a quick format. Um, even though it's a 32 gig, um, they set aside 12 gigs on that first partition for the operating system. And then the other 20 gigs is for storage. Um, again, if I had an extra USB port, I could use more. So uh, that's it in a nutshell. That's pretty much the main settings I kind of want to go through. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll go through and, and um, we'll we'll do the rest outside. I got to set up the mount outside and then we'll I'll do some more recordings. So we'll stop for here.